Picture Studios, it's America's Game. As this may be the most disgusting movie I've ever seen, let's preface this recap with some motivational imagery. Got any ideas? Anyone? Bueller? Yep. I said it before and I'll say it again. Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while. You could miss it. Sorry, got a little lost there. Let's get on with this. <clears throat> we open on English heartthrob Martin Lomax, a parking garage security guard working on the night shift, baby. Dying for your touch like crazy. Racking up the overtime hours, loving how we're working on the night shift, baby. CDs are $5 at the door. He's enjoying a screening of the first human centipede while on the job because nothing says safe for work like indulging in the romantic imagery of a trio of tossed salads. We quickly discover Martin is the furthest thing from a people person as he assaults the only two customers in the entire car park. Not really a strong business move in my opinion, but what do I know? Mimicking the undeniable sex appeal of Mr. Clean, our filthy boy tidies up his mess into the back of his van. Thank God this movie is in black and white, or somebody may have noticed that the massive red blood stains he left behind isn't just motor oil. Pouncing at the opportunity to invest in some high demand real estate, Martin purchases a glamorous open concept warehouse. His plan? Construct his own human centipede in a manner that makes the first movie Look like an episode of Paw Patrol. For someone with severe asthma, baby, there's nothing holding him back. Marty deposits his first abductees onto the dance floor to begin his DIY passion project. To what is, I'm sure, all of our surprise, we learn Martin's home life isn't the most flattering. His mother is emotionally abusive. His father is in prison for being sexually abusive. And his psychiatrist, Dr. Sebring, Looks like he's letting a family bird spill the goddamn condo complex on his face. As if it was part of his job description, our lad goes back to work to serve his civil duty of attacking literally anything that moves. He finds some new targets. He hears their heartbeat to the beat of the drum. Oh, what a shame that they came here with someone. Snatching up these next two victims, Martin pitches them into the back of his van like bales of hay with the same strength and confidence of Vin Diesel in a muscle shirt. He then heads back to his office to raise the flag stick and polish one out for all glory. Funny enough, this marks the last scene of this movie that's at least manageable to watch. The Human Centipede 2, it's like seeing your grandmother get on stage at a burlesque show. At first you're shocked and almost proud of her for getting out of her comfort zone, but that feeling quickly changes too. Why the fuck am I watching my grandma strip? Anyways, Marty McFly's mother finds a scrapbook her son made as an obsessive tribute to the cinematic masterpiece that is the original Human Centipede. She rips up the pages in spite, which triggers Martin to go crazy. Oh baby! He 
was already on the edge. 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 But now he musters up the strength to knock her out of commission. Martina waxes Mima with a crowbar as if she was a head crab from Half-Life. Rise and shine, Mr. Freeman. Rise and shine. Developing an appetite eats dinner for a little mid-game fuel. After taking a few minutes for some self-reflection, with a change of heart, Martin then kindly donates a bullet to his neighbor's leg and preps his tool bag for the brutal operation to come. Treating his sadistic vocation as a casting opportunity, to round out the final piece to his human puzzle, he poses as an agent and contacts the lead actress from the first film, Ashlyn Yenny, to audition her for his lead role. Returning to the grind like a fucking horse, Martin channels his inner Sherlock, holds a magnifying glass up to the computer monitor, and spots his next giddy volunteers. It's our bearded pal Dr. Sebring, in the back seat of a sedan getting jiggy with a prostitute named Candy. candy. <laughs> Martin slays him, and a couple others, recycling their bodies for his fantasy fulfillment. As the last hoorah in his foraging efforts, he picks up Ashlyn from the airport and drives her to the warehouse. Keeping this brief, as to at least remain on the fence of YouTube's ad suitability policies, Martin then proceeds to commit some less than sanitary acts to his victims, involving a hammer, crowbar, barbed wire, knives, laxatives, and a staple gun as he conjoins his lucky contestants into a 12-person centipede. He completes the surgery, proving that med school is a sham and you can do anything without a license. Relishing in glory, shit then hits the fan and a victim escapes. The centipede disbands and Martin begins duck hunting. Ashlyn gets a hold of Marty and hazes him into butt funneling his pet centipede because, oh yes, I forgot to mention Martin as a pet centipede in case that arthropodic theme wasn't already hammered down our throats. This brings on some understandable abdominal discomfort to her piece of trash protagonist, and he scurries away. Transition to Martin, back to work in the parking garage. Presumably refreshed after his unconventional colonoscopy, he patiently waits for more unsuspecting victims. If you get a thrill from watching your attacker struggle from being pepper sprayed instead of taking the opportunity to, you know, run away, hate going to the dentist because you have sensitive gums, or can never find a parking spot because the security guard keeps slaughtering people before they get a chance to move their cars, then this movie's for you. Drop a like and subscribe if you want to see more horror recaps. Comment down below what movies you want to see Butcher next. And check out the link in the description for merch. Thank you for helping support the channel.